Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got a great little scope from Richter Optics on test. But before that, we're out on a hunting trip that sees us bag our first ever magpie for the Air Gun Show cameras. Right, I'm out on one of my woodland permissions this evening and I'm going to be targeting pests around a pheasant feeder. Now this time of year is particularly good for that because the keeper's only got a couple of feeders on the go. Whereas in the winter he would have dozens of pheasant feeders going, the fact that there are only a few makes them a real honey pot. I've been targeting this one over the last few weeks and I've accounted for grey squirrels, corvids and rats so we'll give it a try this evening and see what turns up. I've got a semi-permanent hide here which has been in position for several weeks. Now, this is something I'm doing more and more now. Although it's fairly discreet and I have dressed it with a bit of vegetation, because it's been here so long, it's just been accepted as a natural part of the landscape. So even if it gets clocked by crows, magpies or even the squirrels, they're not treating it with suspicion. So that's the hide. The toughest part is probably going to be clambering inside of it, but I'll get in now, we'll settle down and hopefully get a few shots. So the scene is set. We've got a ready food supply that's getting regular visits from woodland pests and I've set up a hide that's been taken for granted by the resident wildlife. Conditions are certainly favourable, so we should be in for a productive evening once I've made myself comfortable and settled in. I usually favour the extra wallop of an FAC rated air gun for squirrel control, but the lie of the land here, the sloping bank and the wall of trees really does make the shot and the sound of the impacting pellet echo. And the squirrels here, having seen a lot of shooting pressure, are getting very twitchy. So I don't want the extra noise of the FAC rated air gun. Instead, I've opted for the Air Arms Ultimate Sporter, legal limit, flat shooting 177 and it's very quiet. True to my usual form, I'm going to put on my head net even though I'm shooting from behind a hide net. There's a good chance of adding one or two bonus corvids to the bag this evening and I don't want them to be spooked by any telltale flashes of pale skin. The final job is a quick scan through the shooting window that I've made through the hide net, just to check that I can easily get on aim where I expect the squirrels to show themselves. The test run reveals a bramble that's bound to snag my shoulder just when I don't want it to, but it's easily pushed out of the way, leaving me clear to line up for shots. And now it's just a matter of being patient and keeping quiet. We soon have some interest at the feeder, but this evening's first visitor isn't on our hit list. Well, we've got a pheasant out. It's not what we're after, but it may just help to convince the squirrels that the coast is clear and it's safe to venture out.
and sure enough, a less welcome diner soon creeps out to snack on the grain. Well, that one did flip out a little way into the field, but it was very solidly hit in the head and it looks like it's expired now, just a few feet away from the feeder. So that's one in the bag. I don't want to cause a disturbance by breaking cover to make a retrieve and it appears to be the right decision as another squirrel soon comes out to feed, just a few feet from its dead mate. We actually had two squirrels out then. One of them did the sensible thing and scarpered when the pellet walloped his mate, but I dare say it'll probably back out later on. Getting to observe wildlife as it goes about its business is just one of the bonuses of shooting from a hide. This deer is completely at ease and obviously has no idea that we're here. sight. It probably won't impress the gamekeeper very much but it's always nice to see deer up close like this and this one doesn't seem to be at all bothered by that dead squirrel. The deer has moved on but there's still a steady trickle of pheasants coming to the feeder, along with another greedy squirrel. I thought we were on for that one but the damned pheasant scared it off. It emerged from exactly where that spooked one disappeared earlier on, so no prizes for guessing which one it was. Fingers crossed it'll come out again for another go. But before the squirrel has a chance to come back out, we're treated to another appearance from the deer. And this time there are more. We've got three deer out there now. It's less than 30 metres away, so it certainly goes to show just how well concealed we are. With the disturbance from the deer passed once more, I continue to wait it out in the hope that the next visitor to the feeder will be what we came here for. Persistence pays off and I've soon got another bushy tail in the crosshairs. And another squirrel. That one was very twitchy, so I think it might have been the one that was frightened off. Either way, it's another one in the bag. The late evening sun has broken through the clouds and it seems to be drawing out the squirrels. This one doesn't even make it to the feeder. What a shot. I didn't actually see that one come out. I just looked around and there it was sat on top of the post. And it was actually better presented than the ones on the ground.
Here's a chance I really don't want to mess up. A sharp-eyed magpie has cottoned onto the carnage around the feeder and has swooped down for a closer look, oblivious to the danger that's lurking nearby. Well, I'm very happy with that one. I'm always glad to take out a nest-robbing magpie, but I think that's the first one we've captured in front of the air gun show cameras. The funny thing was that the pheasant just carried on feeding, which is testament to just how stealthy this approach is. It's turning out to be a great session, but unfortunately, Nicky needs to get away, so we are gonna to have to wrap up the filming now. I must admit that the pins and needles are starting to creep in, but I'm going to stick it out until the bitter end and see if I can't nail one or two more uninvited diners. A memorable session there with some great wildlife encounters and a bonus magpie. Now it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Egan Show News, brought to you by the Egan Center. The Scottish Government is sowing panic and confusion with its Egan Surrender campaign, according to Basque. The organisation believes lawful owners are being frightened into handing over their Egans, even though the licensing process does not begin until the 1st of July and laws come into effect on the 1st of January next year. Basque Scotland director Dr Colin Shedden described the process as a shambles and a travesty and urged the Scottish Government to provide critical information on the process and stop causing panic among law-abiding people. Here's a glimpse behind the scenes at Umarex HQ in Arnsberg, Germany. This busy air gun making setup is only a fraction of their global operation, which employs 850 people worldwide. And it looks like the German air gun giants are set to focus on their Walter brand this summer, with new releases including the Classus Woodstock brake barrel and the LGU Varmint underlever. This is the new BSA R10 SE, and it's in shops now. The latest evolution of the Birmingham Gunmaker's flagship PCP boasts a multi-adjustable butt pad, a 25% increase in shot count, and the ability to switch from a fully shrouded to unshrouded barrel in seconds. There are four stock options and it's available in 177, 22 and 25 caliber, with prices starting at £799. There's loads to do at the UK Game Fair on the 22nd to the 24th of July at Stoneleigh. Countryside Learning is the fair's official charity and says it will provide a whole area full of rural activities to get youngsters involved with the countryside. The experience campaign will also have its hub at the Countryside Learning Stand. From there, field sports newcomers will be encouraged to try clay shooting, fishing, archery, air gunning, working dogs and 4x4s. Find out more at ukgamefair.com. And finally, the winner of the Tracer Lead Ray F600 Lamping Kit up for grabs in our free competition is Mike Taylor from Ashford in Kent. The powerful F600 lamp has a 222 lumen beam and shifts between blue, green and red light with a twist of a collar. It's equipped with a focusable beam and three levels of illumination and comes with adjustable mount attachments for 25 and 30 mm scope tubes, anti-spill snoot, stock mounted remote switch rechargeable battery and mains charger. Well done Mike, your prize is on its way to you. That was the Egan Show News. Right, here we have the Richter Optic 3 to 9 by 50 AOE scope. I've been wanting to get a Richter scope on the test bench for some time now, as they're incredibly well priced. This one has a price tag of just £69.99. So let's take a closer look and see how it shapes up on the features and performance front. My first impression is that it seems to be a very well constructed scope. 
The tough aluminium body features a 25 mm tube. It's nitrogen purged to keep it fog proof and it's also shock proof so it should easily withstand the recoil of a spring powered air gun. It weighs in at 622 grams and measures just a shade over 33 centimeters. The sight picture is bright and crisp thanks in no small part to the large 50 mm objective lens which gives good light transmission. The lenses are also fully coated with an anti-reflective compound for enhanced performance. Magnification is adjustable from three to nine times, which is just about right for most air gun work. The higher settings should be perfect for long range work, especially with the added stability of a bipod. On the lower settings, you get a wider field of view for faster target acquisition and improved light transmission at dawn and dusk. The collar that shifts the zoom up and down is very smooth to operate. Parallax is adjustable by the collar at the front of the scope, which, just like the zoom ring, turns very smoothly but without any slackness. It focuses right down to just 10 yards, which, as I've said in the past, is a real asset to anyone carrying out close range pest control. The windage and elevation turrets are relatively low profile, which I really like. The one quarter MOA adjustment means that one click shifts the point of aim one quarter of an inch at 100 yards. The dials turn with very positive clicks and while it is possible to turn them with your thumbnail, it's a job that's best done with a key or screwdriver. The reticle is nice and fine and features mill dots to give you additional aim points to compensate for a side wind and the rise and fall of the pellet. And the fast focus eye bell means you can ensure that the reticle is exactly focused to suit your eye. The reticle can also be illuminated in red for improved contrast against a dark backdrop, which can be very handy when shooting at dusk or when lamping. You switch it on and off and choose from 11 different power settings using the very positive dial towards the rear of the scope. The Richter Optic Exact is a very impressive package and even comes with a set of flip-up lens covers. It's well constructed and optical quality is good. And when you consider that it boasts features including adjustable parallax, an illuminated reticle and three to nine times magnification, you certainly get a lot for under £70 with this remarkably affordable scope. It's even covered by a two-year warranty. If you want to find out more, they've got a brilliant website and there's even a gallery where you can upload photos of yourself in action with your own Richter Optic Scope. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.